Well, I'm no different to any footballer, any young boy growing up. The first time I kicked the football, I must have been about four or five years old, growing up in Jamaica. My father played football for Jamaica, so I grew up in a football household. And like any other footballer, you know, I just remember as, as long back as I can remember, I must have been four or five years old. In fact, my father said he put a football in the crib and I used to kick it before I could walk. But that's the same for any, any young footballer. You know, you just love playing football. So probably three or four years old in Jamaica. Any football player who has talent needs more than that to become a footballer. You need a spirit, you need a dedication, you need a discipline. Because when I came to England from Jamaica at 13, I played with a lot of boys my age who I considered to be better than me or as good as me, who never made it as professional footballers. And it wasn't because of their talent, it's because of their discipline or their desire. And I think that, that are the two biggest elements in any, in any walk of life, in any sport, that as much as you have talent, you need to be able to carry that talent. And what carries that talent is what you have inside you, that the dedication to your sport and that discipline. So for me, my father being in the army, being very disciplined, uh, as a very disciplined young boy, that helped me a lot in my football career because talent alone won't get you anywhere. Well, my nickname still is, and it was when I played football, Digger Barnes. Um, and it came from a character in Dallas, those of you old enough to remember, I suppose you have to be over 40 or over 35, to remember a very popular TV program called Dallas in, uh, in, in America an American TV program, but it was all over the world. And the character in that was called Digger Barnes. So any footballer in the 80s who was called Barnes was called Digger. So there was a footballer called Paul Barnes from Ipswich, and he was called Digger. There's another footballer from West Ham called Bobby Barnes, and he was also called Digger. So if you're called Digger in the early 80s, sorry, if you're called Barnes in the early 80s, your nickname was Digger. Well, I think that any, any footballer, when you get to a certain age, um, you become a little bit cynical because when you're a young boy growing up playing football, you play because you love the game. And I think for any player to keep that hunger, they have to remember why they get involved in football in the first place. And one feature of football, when you become a footballer at the highest level, is you get paid a lot of money. But that is not why you're going to the game. You're going to the game because you love it. So as a young boy playing football in Jamaica, I never thought I was going to be a professional footballer playing for Liverpool and England, earning lots of money, but I knew I would play football because I love it. And if you look at someone like Wayne Rooney, for example, he plays because he loves the game, Ryan Giggs. So the money will come if that's what your ambition is. But more importantly, the what drives you on is the love of football. And I think that all footballers have to have that. And once you lose that, forget about the money, it's time to give up. Well, if I could play for any team now, um, as much as I played for a fantastic Liverpool team, the two teams I would play for, I'll name two, are Barcelona, because I think they're the best football team in the world. They play very attractive football. And in the Premier League, it would have to be Arsenal. Of course, if it's not going to be Liverpool, because Arsenal play the type of football that I like. And as much as maybe Chelsea and Manchester United may have won the league, but the most attractive football in the Premier League at the moment is Arsenal. In a team, everybody has to contribute. And the goalkeeper contributes by saving goals, the defenders contribute by defending, and I was an attacking creative player. So the contribution I made was I created for my team. That's not more important than the defenders or the midfield players who have to tackle, and that's what being a team is all about. So my contribution, maybe the fans appreciated it more because it was creative, but it was no more important than any of the other 10 players' contribution. Football today is faster. Footballers today are fitter, they're stronger, they're quicker because the diet and the nutrition that's coming into football means that athletes are getting better. It is probably not as tough as in my day because the rules have changed whereby you're not allowed to tackle hard anymore and be over physical. So physically, in terms of the aggression, football was much more aggressive in my day, whereas now it is much faster. Play down. Oh, tries to quicken it up. Bonds with it! Barnes is second, 2-0 from foot to back. Get the best a man can get and always stay ahead of the game to live a football dream.
Football Idol with me, John Barnes. To live your football dream. Send a video of your football performance or your goal celebration to our website, www.liveyourfootballdreams.com. What are you waiting for? You might stand a chance of this money can't buy experience. Holding up McMahon. Ah, oh, it's a marvellous goal from John Barnes. Something out of nothing. Jerry McMahon just couldn't get out of him. And Barnes caught hold of a wonderfully struck shot to beat Ian Walker. All ends up. My favourite game. Um, was, and I mentioned earlier, the importance of playing as a team and respecting your teammates and putting in a good team performance. And when I played for Liverpool against Nottingham Forest, where we won 5 0, that was the best team performance I'd been involved with. And uh, they actually made a DVD specially of that game, which they now sell and show around because that was the best um, all around performance from a team for 90 minutes that you know a lot of people had seen before. Well, there's lots of challenging games we've played in. Um, every footballer will tell you that they're hard games, um, but the most challenging one from a memorable point of view was um, the FA Cup final against Everton after Hillsborough, where we lost, where we won 3-2 and we were 2-0 one 2 nil up and they came back. Um, and it was important for us to win that game for the fans who had lost their lives, so that was probably the most challenging game we've played in. Well, you overcome the challenge as you overcome all challenges in life by staying disciplined, staying focused, Believing in yourselves, believing in your teammates, believing in your friends, believing in the fans. And the biggest example of that, so that, that shows what can be achieved if you stick together. Well, the worst experience I had as a footballer had nothing to do with football. It was the Hillsborough disaster in 1989, playing for Liverpool against Nottingham Forest when 92 Liverpool fans lost their lives in the disaster uh, when there was a tragedy at the stadium and it brings it home to you how life is much more important than football and such an occasion where it's the FA Cup semi-final for football fans to lose their lives was the worst experience I've been through in life, never mind in football. Look at this break by Barnes now, the flag stays down and the ball is in the net by John Barnes! Well, what makes me become who, who I am right now is because I, like anybody else, is a product of my environment. My parents have been my biggest role models, and when you are brought up in a particular way, that has the biggest influence on your life. Football hasn't made me become the person I am. It has given me the opportunities I have to, to become who I am professionally, but personally, in terms of my character um, and my philosophy on life, that has nothing to do with football, because football is a job that I love doing, and it has given me wonderful opportunity to travel the world and to come to places like this. But in terms of the person I am, when I have my family and my children, um, my environment has, which is my mother and father and, my, and my, all my other, my other relatives, they, they have made me the person I am. The biggest advice I can give to anybody, I give my children, not just footballers, but people growing up, is to realize your dream, you have to have discipline, dedication, and, and, and spirit and belief, because you put your mind to anything, you can do it. But you need to have that discipline to carry it through. You need to have that desire and that determination because you're going to have setbacks. Maybe things don't go your way, but you have to have that belief in yourself and be true to yourself. You can convince yourself that you're trying, but you're not really trying. You can convince yourself that the, the coach doesn't like you. That's why you haven't made it. But if you have that spirit and that discipline, you will always be successful. 
if you look at football in this region, and as much as we're here in Malaysia and giving you tips, and if you want to look to, to emulate somebody, you don't have to look at the Premier League, you don't have to look at the Brazilians, you can look at other regions. You look at what Japan and South Korea have achieved because in terms of from a region, they're very similar to, the, to Malaysians. In terms of stature, they're similar to Malaysians. Um, in terms of ability, they're similar to the Malaysians. But they have maximized their potential because they have embraced the qualities necessary for success, which is spirit, organization, togetherness and belief. Because the African teams were probably physically stronger, technically better, more skillful, but they didn't achieve as much as the South Koreans or the Japanese because they didn't have that desire and that discipline. Everybody has skill. All young boys all over the world have skill. No one's more skillful than others. You can go to Brazil, Malaysia, all young six, seven, eight, nine-year-old boys are the same. But to have that belief and that discipline and that, that, that spirit is what will make you a proper footballer. They encouraged me to be a football player. Uh, my parents, when I was very young, they encouraged me to take up sport, and so football was always my first love. So my parents would be the people who encouraged me to play football. I think a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication. Um, when I was younger, I hurt my knee very, uh, very severely, and uh, I had to work really hard to achieve my goal, which is to play professional football. Well, my son uh, likes to play football, um, didn't quite make it, he had a chance to play for, for a junior team but didn't quite make it. Now he's at university and he's playing for the, the first team in university so he, uh, he enjoys playing socially and more so than professionally. Uh, the expectations are other people's expectations, you know, when, when your son turns up they expect him to be like his father and that's not always the case. So sometimes um, uh, sons play, there's not many sons of uh, famous parents play football, I can only think of four or five, uh, because it's very, very difficult for, for the sons to emulate their fathers. The best experience is playing for my country. I, I uh, played for England uh, in 1970-whatever, and uh, that is the great experience for me, to put on this, the, uh, the white shirt of England and to play for the national team is a big thing for me. My dream as a young boy was always to play uh, professional football and uh, I managed to live my dream. Um, so to, just to play professional sport, especially football, has always been my dream and my ambition. Oh, I played against my opponent. I, uh, uh, John Barnes was always a very, very difficult opponent um, uh, because he was so skillful. So yeah, so he's always it was always good battles between myself and John Barnes, so uh, John Barnes would be up there against the most difficult opponents, yes. You want to defeat every team you play, because every Saturday or every Wednesday or every Monday when you play, the idea is always to, to beat the opposition. So whoever it is, whoever I'm playing, uh, whether it's my son or anything else, I always like to win, so it doesn't matter. Whoever I'm playing against the next day. Uh, with 90 seconds, Seven. we could still be another couple of goals, to be honest. Martin. It's Lee Martin, Mr. Sitter, in game one, it's Liv Anderson! United have come from behind and lead. Lightning counter-attack. Yeah, good break by Snoz. One of the fittest of the Man U lads, yeah. Breaks out. Obviously, for Glamour to win the uh, Champions League twice, back-to-back, -back, is very, very, uh, very good. Um, to play for my country is very, very good as well. I, it would be up there. I think if I had to choose to play for England uh, 30 times is one of the most memorable days of my career. Manchester United has always been my team, but um, 
I've always been a Nottingham, I've always, I've born and bred in Nottingham, so Nottingham Forest is one of the, I look to straight away. Uh, but I like Arsenal. I'm very fortunate to play for both those teams, so uh, I would say Nottingham Forest and Arsenal. When I played for Manchester United, Brian Robson was the captain of the team, so he was always our mentor as a team captain, so, uh, and he was my captain in England as well. So Brian Robson would be the, my mentor if I had a mentor. I, as I said earlier, I've always been a Manchester United fan. So the uh, Manchester United great team with uh, Dennis Law, George Best and Bobby Charlton has uh, always been uh, my number one team. So to emulate them and to eventually play for Manchester United was always been my dream. That's how you live your football dream. Football Idol with me, Viv Anderson. to live your football dream. Now log on to www.liveyourfootballdream.com You might stand a chance. This money can't buy experience. What are you waiting for? My uh, bad experience, I would say, is when I, uh, I dislocated my knee and snapped my ligaments when I was 17. Uh, that was a really bad experience. I was out for six months and I had to uh, re rehabilitation. I had to do all these sort of things to get back to playing a career. So before my, my career even started, I had a really bad injury that uh, nearly threatened my career. So that is a bad experience for me. The most challenging game is uh, to win any major competition, so I would say we played Malmo in the European Champions League final and we played Hamburg in the Champions League final, so I would say if I had to choose, I would say Hamburg because we were the underdogs and we didn't expect to win and uh, we managed to win, so that is the most experienced one. I'm very, very, very fortunate. I played for Nottingham Forest, which is my home team. I played for uh, Manchester United, I played for Arsenal, so I played for all the big clubs really, so there's not a team I don't think I would want to play for, maybe, uh, maybe Barcelona now. My job is to keep uh, clean sheets and stop the ball going in the net, but if I could help the team to score goals, I would try and do so. Uh, my contribution would be A, to keep the ball out of the net, but if I could score goals and create goals, that would always be a bonus to the team. I think uh, when I played, it's more tougher now. But the rules are different now. I mean, no, no tackling from behind, all these things which we used to do and players used to have to get on with. Now it's, it's stop start. I think it is uh, it's more difficult to play in my day than it was to play now. What I did when I was uh, very, very small, you know, I, from very early on, as you said, I had a bad knee and I had to uh, work on my career and uh, do things, come in early, do things that uh, normal people don't do. So I had to, from a very early age, work really hard on my physical prowess, my legs, my knees, to make sure I could have a career. So that helped me in my life now. So. Uh, I go to the gym most time, most, three times a week, just to make sure everything works. So 
that's my sin. I think you have to listen and learn uh, your coaches and listen to what they've got to say because uh, it's very important they're giving you knowledge that they've got themselves and I think it's really important that you do what they say. Uh, I did when I was very early, I had a very good manager very early on and I learned a lot from my coaches and my manager so I think it's important you do what you can, do as much as you can and ne never go away from a training field or, or a game thinking I could have done more. I think if you can give 100% in any game then you can come off the field and think well it's at least I may not be good enough but I gave 100% to the team and everybody around so and then I can go home and be happy with my contribution to the team so that's important I think. Our football in Malaysia is, is obviously growing in Malaysia now I've been here many times and I've seen the young children and they've got very a lot of ability and I think they need to be uh, focused on on uh, trying to uh, get that ability to the next level. So I think Malaysian football is, is very, very good. What I've seen, some very talented players. It's just putting it into uh, a team structure. I think individually they're very good, but I think uh, in a team structure, which we talk about all the best teams, you have to play like a Lionel Messi, for instance. He's very talented, but in a team structure he plays and he plays to his ability. I think. That is important. So I think uh, it's putting that ability that have got the Malaysian players, young players, put it into a team structure and making the team successful. I think that is important.